Um, it, silence. When COVID first started, and we everyone was freaked out, and yeah, it's like, what the fuck do we do now? Um, I had always wanted to produce a rock doc, and I knew the guys, and I came to them, and it took them like three weeks to get back to me. And then they're like, yeah, sure, dude, come down to the studio. So I didn't really know them that well, and then like a week later, Chico, the drummer, is like, you want to come to Missouri with us? And I didn't know, I just didn't know enough about them. I really didn't know them, and I, I thought, I'm like, well, are these guys going to go get jobs at Trader Joe's? Like, what do they do now? I mean, then Roger, like everyone, I mean, everyone's, show, I mean, he's got people that you guys know. When everything shut down, I was like, what, are, what is everybody going to do now? What do these guys do? Um, so, when uh, I went out to Missouri with them, I had no idea what I was in for. <laughs> like, no idea. And they, they took over the, the house that you saw, and they started working on a new record. I was out there for like two weeks, and... Uh, it was amazing. So it grew from there, and then we got other other people involved, Sammy Hagar and, and uh, Rick Springfield, and those people all, all jumped on board. So. so I think we have them here on FaceTime. Yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah. 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 Hey. You guys rock. You guys rock. It's your phone. <laughs> Can you can you see the audience? Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, say hi to everyone if you can. I got the microphone up to the phone. Okay, <laughs> We're talking to challenge. Okay. Say hi. Can you hear? Can you hear? Can you hear? Yes. 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 Filming, filming, filming. Uh, two times at the end. Um, obviously, walking out on stage with Sammy was like, yeah. uh, and and but even more so with with the Black Moods. I mean, just because I know them personally, and I, when I was in the green room getting ready with them that night, you kind of saw a little bit. Like it was, you know, it's it's hard to compress two years into into an hour and a half, um, and. And I wasn't there for a lot of the heavy emotional stuff with these guys making the record, but it was it was very emotional for everyone. I mean, it's it's what they do, and it was just taken away. And uh, you know, they were they were creative enough and had had the you know go ahead to, to to start working on a new record. A lot of people just didn't know what to do, but just I think that that night at the Marquee was was pretty amazing. So were you there for all the footage, or did they capture footage on their own? And engage? I probably shot 95% of that. Of there was a lot of archive footage that I've gotten from um, a couple guys. David, David, where are you? Major? <laughs> David, David! Uh, all right. David was my second camera. He's awesome. He shot a ton of stuff for me. Got the drone footage, the stuff of Marquee, and Steel Panther. So. Steel Panther was fun. <laughs> yeah, they, those guys are weirdos. <laughs> They got a good deal going on. Yeah, any other questions? Yep, right here. I honestly, I was, for about six months, I was freaked out. I didn't, I couldn't even start. And then one day, I started in the middle, and because I didn't edit in chronological order at all. Um, I, I edited, I started editing in chunks. I did a, a segment that each segment had a beginning, middle, and end. So I, there was like five minute chunks, 10 minute chunks, all out of order, and then I put them all in order and hope that it made sense. Incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Question back there. Yes. Yeah. What plans do you 
you, oh, what's what's going to be happening as far as the movie being able to be seen beyond the film right. festival? Right. Uh, we have a few more film festivals. Um, not none of the like mega ones. I think this is one of the biggest ones we're doing, but some smaller ones around the country. Um, I mean, I'm not going to them. They're just playing. And then um, once that's done, and we see what the outcome of those types of things are, then um, we'll, we're looking at a distributor. Basically, a distributor is going to move it to streaming. So we'll be, we're hoping by the fall, it'll be on all all streaming platforms. Um, Netflix and Hulu are tougher to crack, but everything else below that, and then um, there's a lot of weird things I don't even understand in some of this world, the smart TVs and Comcast and, and Xfinity, and um, it's possible we could get like a Lionsgate or a Magnolia of Sony Pictures or something that if they pick it up, then they will get it in basic distribution, uh, mostly streaming, I mean, that's where everything is these days. So in DVD, if you really wanted a DVD. <laughs> yes. Ooh, uh, I filmed off and on for about two years, starting when COVID started, the June of 20, May of June of 2020, when I went to Missouri with them. And then I finished um, after Sammy Hagar and the Black Moods did their first show back. And then I did a few more things after that, but I made it look like it was, like when they were on the bus and they're all like kind of mopey when everything shut down, that was actually on the way to Flagstaff going to Pine Top. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they, were just, they were just talking about business stuff and non this but it looked like they were all like, ooh. <laughs> so so I, almost almost two years of filming. Yeah. And then about a year to edit. Do we have a question back here? I have a question. Yes. I mean, when I, when we first went out on the bus, it was, yeah, it was hard. I mean, everything we had to stop was all, all takeaway, you know, take out. We couldn't go into restaurants, um, had to wear your mask everywhere and that kind of thing. In Missouri, they mostly, we were hunkered down in, in that house in Tony, who's the label manager, mostly in their house. We didn't leave a whole lot. Um, and Josh's mom lives uh, down like 20 minutes away. So... It was hard. I mean, traveling on the plane, you know, it's like everyone masks and doing that kind of stuff. It was, we weren't, everyone's like, oh my God, dude, you're with a rock band. You must be out partying. I'm like, no, we just <laughs> sit around and watch rock docs and Seinfeld episodes like Josh right. was saying. <laughs> yeah, question back here, sir? Yeah. So how are you able to connect with the legacy guys like Kevin and Sammy? Like, you know, like, are you sitting um, we, we'd we been filming for, I mean, my initial intent was just a regional thing, you know, Roger and, and, and Josh and um, our, our local guys, the local scene, and we'd actually been trying to bug Alice Cooper um, and to, to get him involved and just couldn't get through the gatekeepers and the managers, blah, blah. Um, one day I was like, well, screw it, let's just go after everybody. So I got out, I, I, I got a hold of a list of managers. Uh, sent a lot of emails out, um, got a lot of very polite no's, um, but most people, most managers got back to me, they were nice. And Sammy Hagar's manager is a guy named Tom Consolo, he's been with um, REO since the beginning. Um, he wrote me back within like half an hour and was like, yeah, let me ask Sam if he's interested. <laughs> Which was the craziest email to get, and I was like, oh no, you know, don't get too excited. And then within an hour he wrote back and he's like, when can you be in Dana Point? We'll do Sam one day, we'll do my... Excuse me, Mike, the next day, he said, Sammy, Sammy really wants to make sure that the f they're a band. It doesn't want to be just focused on Sammy. He wants other guys included. Is that okay? Wow. <laughs> uh, and then he's got, he, he's good friends with Rick. Rick. Rick Springfield, Sammy Hagar, and Kevin Cronin are all really good friends. They jam together a lot. So a month later, he was like, hey, do you want to do Rick? Uh, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. At one point, we had Pat Benatar, but she eventually declined. So... Um, Got super lucky in a way, but also, I mean, just kind of came together in a fate-wise. I mean, it, you know, it's amazing for the band to have to have these other guys in their in their movie. So, yeah. How did Corey Taylor come about? <laughs> the their pub, the Black Moods publicist is good friends with Corey's wife, <laughs> and so he agreed. But, well, though the managers of all of them, they get hit up with a million requests a day, and they, what they all said was, in the middle of all of this, they thought this was a very important issue, especially the older guys, because these guys were in their 70s, and nobody knew how long this was going to last. So 
they were saying this instead of just the usual interviews about you know back in the 60s how much drugs did you do and you know band arguments and why'd you fire Eddie Van Halen you who fired who and they, it was a real story about what they were doing with their lives at that time so the managers thought it was a good story to be involved in nice so lucked out yeah then, yes <laughs> uh, that has to do with the management <laughs> who doesn't want me to put it out <laughs> I mean I'm kidding uh, no we just we we don't want it out until it's really ready to be out because if you if we made a big deal out of this but then if we really don't get a distribution deal until the fall then it's kind of already out there and it's kind of like, oh yeah, we saw something about that six months ago. These, the distributors and like Rolling, you know, if you say a good article in Rolling Stone magazine, they want it to be, they want to be the first. They want it to be fresh and brand new. They don't want something that's been kicking around for six months or a year and we don't know how long a distribution is going to take. So we've been keeping it quiet. Yeah, so. Uh, PhoenixFilmFestival.com forward slash donors choice. Vote for this film! Vote for yeah. this film. <laughs> <laughs> the audience can vote? The audience can vote? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was just you guys. Yeah. Oh, well, everybody vote for this film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought it was just, I thought you guys no, had no, a no, judging it's, 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 dollar, it's a dollar per vote. A dollar per vote? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so what is it? What is it again? <laughs> PhoenixFilmFestival.com forward slash donors choice. Oh, and some nice. of the, in the free shows, that if you're at a further screenings, will be a QR code that will show up in that corner there. Okay. Well, now that I know that, I'll, I'll send that out to everyone tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, no. Nope. All right. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so and much. For, uh, when the Black Boots come back, go see them in concert. Yeah. Go see them in concert. Thank you, everybody.